Our introduction to indexes is going to start with what's called the clustered index. Now, before we talk about the clustered indexes, we have storage for our tables. But how are the records within a table stored? SQL Server obviously stores many tables in a database. But how is the data in each table stored and referenced? Well, one thing we know is larger tables with more records will consume more space than smaller tables with fewer records. Where are they stored? Well, they're broken up into memory pages. A page is 8K of memory storage in SQL Server. A page holds record or records for a given table depending on how large each row is. So let's use this example. Let's say four of these records would fit in one memory page. That means 12 records would fill up three memory pages. Do tables normally occupy more than one memory page? No, most tables have numerous records and so they require multiple memory pages to contain the table's records. Now, how are they physically stored? Well, let's say we've decided to put them in order by social security number. Regardless of the order you insert these records, this is how they'll be stored. So what we've done is we've set up a clustered index. This table is sorted in the system by social security number. The clustered index is the placement order of a table's records in memory pages. Okay, so what happens when new data starts coming in? Let's take Rick Marlin. His social security number starts in the fives. Where physically would he be placed with this other data in memory? Well, it belongs right there. Is there enough room in this memory page to accommodate him without moving other people to a new memory page? Well, yes, there is. So that memory page is now full. And we got more new data coming in. Vince Verhoff, well, it looks like he goes after Irene Intern, which is fine because now he can start occupying the next page of memory. All's well until you start getting into a phenomenon called page splits. Now, let's take this new hire named Major Disarray, whose social security number starts in the fours. Where should we place that? Well, that would go right after Johnny, but right before Rick. But there's no room right now in this memory page unless we did a little shifting around. So here's what happens. Vince is going to move down to make room for Irene to jump to a new memory page, and we'll shift the other two records within the memory page, and slip Major Disarray right in there. This is what's known as a page split, the moving of data from one page to another during data manipulation. Page splits are considered very bad for performance, and there's a number of techniques to reduce or eliminate the risk of page splits. Let's take a look at the code that created the Human Resources Contractor table. Notice Social Security number is set as a primary key. Now, when you set a primary key, by default, it chooses that field as the clustered index. The data in this table will be physically ordered by Social Security number. The code here inserts the three records into the table that you see below. Now, assuming that four records fit into one page of memory for this table, these three records would all be in the same memory page. Well, that means I got room for one insert statement to snugly fit four records into this first page of memory. And it would be laid out just like you see here. The next insert would either go in the first memory page or the second memory page, depending on the value in the clustered field, which is Social Security number. Again, the next insert statement will either try to put the data in the first or second memory page. Since this one's sorted to the first memory page, we had to perform a page split and move Irene Intern from the first page to the second page. It won't take long until every insert starts causing page splits. So how do you prevent this? Here's one idea. We can tell SQL Server not to fill up every section of every memory page on the first sweep of data. 
go ahead and leave some empty space for later inserts so you don't have to move other existing pieces of data around. This is known as a fill factor. Here, we're using a fill factor of 50%. Let's see what effect this has on our future inserts. The next insert was Rick, and he fits right there between Johnny and Sally. Okay, all good, no shifting of data. The next insert is Vince, who will get padded into the second memory page. Now when we insert Major Disarray, there was space set aside, and it doesn't cause a page split. Setting a fill factor uses more space, but it reduces the number of page splits. How exactly do we set the fill factor of the clustered index of the Human Resources Contractor table? Well, let's expand JProco, expand Tables, and scroll down to the Human Resources Contractor table, and you'll notice we have several choices. The folder we want is called Indexes, and there is only one index on this table, and I believe this is the clustered index. It says clustered right here. Let's get the properties, click on Options, and set the fill factor here to 50%, and click OK. Okay, so fill factors use up a little extra space, and they help reduce page splits. What if you knew there was a way to waste no space with a 100% fill factor and eliminate page splits? Well, let's take the same example of the Human Resources Contractor table, and let's add an extra identity field to keep track of the inserts. Now, the clustered index is located on the identity field. What does this do for us? Well, we got new data, 555, coming in for Rick Moreland, and he would get the counter field or identity field of four. Next one, Vince Verhoff would go on the next page, and Major Desiree would come right after him because the contractor ID field would get the value of six. That way, inserts are sequential. You can have 100% fill factors and no page splits. Lab 8.1, Skill Check 1. In the prior section, we learned about the fill factor setting in clustered indexes. Set the fill factor in the JPRO Co. Supplier Table Index to 70%. Skill Check 2. Drop and recreate the JPRO Co. Human Resources Contractor Table with the same fields and same records shown in this section. Include an identity field called contractor ID that is also the primary key. When you are finished, your table should resemble the figure you see here.